All right, family, we have another episode of the Faith Plus Business Podcast of the Lakewood uh, Church Business Ministry. I have a phenomenal guest today. Like, I have the distinct honor of speaking with Bishop Nolan McCanns. Bishop, how are you doing? I'm doing well, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Awesome. I just have to say that it's great to be seen run DMC in a street for <laughs> SARS. <laughs> I love the whole Adidas gear. <laughs> so family, our focus is on the profile of a multifaceted Christian entrepreneur, creating multiple streams of wealth in business. Um, we will be highlighting the characteristics of such an entrepreneur and the strategies to effectively balance, build, and sustain multiple business streams. And no one is better to do this than Bishop McCanns. So Bishop Nolan, just help our audience by giving a one minute overview of who you are. All right, well, first of all, again, thank you for having me. Um, so I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur and I'm, use, I'm seeing that, that language used so frequently now I may have to change that soon, <laughs> but because I want to be unique. I got you. But what that means in my world is 40 plus years of entrepreneurship, uh, started my first business business at, at age 18, developed it, PR firm here in Chicago, and, uh, you know, did, did pretty good. A lot of hard knocks learning the hard way, but, but we made it and, and did some really exciting things. Uh, and so as such, I've also um, been involved as an advocate for entrepreneurs, helping those who desire to start, those who are um, already existing entrepreneurs who may need some support in some way. I work with an organization called The Lonely Entrepreneur. Uh, it's a learning um, center out of, uh, out of New York, and we help people with this incredible platform to support uh, that process. I'm a pastor uh, of a local church, just celebrated 25 years, a uh, church that my wife and I, uh, Gloria and I planted in 1996. And um, I'm also a bishop for, I think, maybe 10 years or so. And I do work uh, globally with that. I'm part of an organization that has uh, uh, reached to, you know, over 100 and some odd nations. So I've worked as a global moderator for a lot of discussions among churches around the world. And I also mm -hmm do work where I'm actually going out to teach leaders, uh, primarily focused in West Af Africa, Central Africa, mm -hmm. some parts of uh, some parts of e uh, Europe and uh, Caribbean. Uh, as a global leader, I'm teaching uh, not only uh, church leaders, but also business leaders. And some of my books that I've written uh, uh, are a part of that whole um, uh, aspect of my life mm -hmm. and so authoring eight books and workbooks uh, co-authored with some beautiful people as well fine art photographer and a gallerist uh, I have a, a gallery in Chicago in one of the art districts that uh, displays my work basically mm -hmm. capturing images so far from about from about uh, 30 countries and and uh, people come and acquire that art, which is very exciting. I have an apparel line that goes with the art that displays the work of, uh, of my photography. The idea there was a product that they could they could grab readily that was affordable, that you know wearable art, so that if they were looking to you know purchase a, a larger frame piece, but they mm -hmm. couldn't afford it immediately. But they were touched by the work, the art, and they wanted to have some piece of it. Then they had the world. And then finally, um, I'm a podcaster with my Inspire podcast, and mm -hmm. um, and that's growing. We're actually going to be turning it in another direction with that one to make it more inspirational, business focused, oh. more than the ministry size. So that's pretty much the big picture of all things Nolan. <laughs> wow! Wow! Yeah, you are multifaceted for sure. <laughs> no doubt about it. Like, it, just as we continue in that same stream, describe the evolution of all things Nolan and how your business ventures have been able to positively impact uh, marketplace ministry. Sure. Well, great. Well, all things Nolan is the, of course, the uh, web domain that leads you to all of the various things that I do. Um, it's pretty much um, the branding wrap that we uh, came to after some some years of, of giving thought to it, because each 
thing that I do was kind of introduced at different times, independent of one another, never with the thought of this, this one uh, you know, package of offerings. Mm. So as they would be, they were manifest and being developed, you know, they, they start to come into their own space and place. And, mm -hmm. and so then finally, finally, it, it uh, kind of uh, dawned on me that these things had some congruency, mm -hmm. that they were uh, interconnected. They were not independent of one another, but they, they were just complements. And it was all coming out of how God created me, who, who he uh, made me, my, my internal form and structure. So uh, the first order of business with something like that is mm -hmm. to become comfortable with the reality of all that you are, which I find that a lot of people struggle with. And then it is not supported by convention. You know, people, people want to put you in a space and keep you there. So like, for example, when I first started to shoot photography and we'll get into the other elements, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and it emerged to become a, a legitimate thing. There were people who, who, if they met me as Bishop or Pastor McCants mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a subtle way, reprimand me for considering myself to be anything other than yes. that. And in fact, for some it was felt to be sort of, you know, an offense and that maybe I'm neglecting my, my, yeah. my role mm -hmm. as this Christian leader to accommodate this other thing that, that is now emerging. Yeah. So it's, um, it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's been, it's been uh, um, a job to just kind of wrestle that down. So mm -hmm. I think we've, we've done it though. And mm -hmm. it, this point presenting as all things Nolan people tend to uh embrace that mm -hmm. and they embrace all that that means uh my my logo is the the signature that's here on my cap which is my nice. actual signature mm -hmm. well even with that <laughs> there was no thought initially of that being the brand logo mm -hmm. it also manifests at the appropriate time uh, and and sort of introduced itself into the whole of the process to say, hey, listen, I, you know, I get attention. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm original. I'm creative, mm -hmm. and and I can speak to the brand anywhere I show up. It's it's clear that that's uh, something that Nolan is involved in. Wow, thank you so much. That that especially when we are in the marketplace as um, missionaries, you know, Christians in the marketplace, it's it's almost like, okay, you have to be in a box like you, like, okay, you should just focus on being a pastor. What business do you have doing photography and all of this? Like, it's almost like you deciding to go into all these areas that he has called you to, like you watering all of these seeds that Christ has planted in you Correct. is taking you away from, your calling, which is not so because he created you. He knew what he placed in you. There's a reason he gave all of that to you. And you not even following it is failing to fulfill his purpose for you in a way, because there's a reason he put all that in you. Absolutely. And yeah. and, and, and the, the, the one thing I want to note, and I think this is very, very important mm -hmm. for anyone who's having this experience to, to, to be mindful of, I did not choose these things. These things chose me. And so, you know, the, the photography uh, was just something that I was passionate about from a teenager. Never mm -hmm. had any thoughts. I had no professional training. And even to this day, I've not had professional training. The most I've had is sixth grade uh, darkroom class. But uh, uh, so I'm just shooting because I see things a certain way. I capture it. I happen to be able to manipulate the equipment to sometimes come up with some creative thing. I don't use Photoshop or anything. So all of my photographs are straight out the camera. Mm. So that's a, that's a, yeah, that's another piece altogether. And, uh, and so the, the, my taking these photos as I travel, mm -hmm. uh, as, you know, I bring them home, enjoy them. So I printed some out once mm. and, and I had it blown up. And one was uh, of the Eiffel Tower, but it was just the lower portion of the Eiffel Tower, not the, the length of it. Mm -hmm. So my focal point was the activity beneath the Eiffel Tower, 
which is absolutely uh, fascinating, particularly at that time, because this is pre 9-11. So you got people everywhere. There's no barriers. There's activities and people enjoying life. Right. So mm. someone saw it in my home, asked where I purchased it. I said I shot it. They didn't believe it. Short story long, they wind up they wound up purchasing it. Which, which triggered a series of other things that led to my becoming uh, uh, involved in an exhibit where I won first pri- or best of photography for a national exhibit, first time out. So I didn't, wow. I didn't pursue that, it pursued me. Mm. I simply mm. embraced it then wow. and said, okay, okay, yeah. this is clearly gifting. Wow. And then it took me uh, following that years to discover how God would use that gift. And I prayed and I prayed and I, and, I, and I searched and I anticipated, I'm looking for it to surface and manifest in a way that it would bless people, it would, it would bless mankind. Mm-hmm. So just recently, mm-hmm. I did a photo essay. It's, a, it's called Stillness, it's on YouTube. You can also get it on my All Things Nolan mm-hmm. website. And this photo essay, uh, is a series of images taken here in Chicago when the streets were bare at the onset of the, of the pandemic. We took that and added the narrative, music, some video clips, and created this photo essay. At the end of it, I encourage people to be vaccinated. And then uh, I make a special appeal to Black people. I'm a mm-hmm. Black man, I especially appeal to Black people. This thing has, uh, I've been on a number of front page newspapers, the uh, local movie theaters have been playing it just like a PSA at the beginning of the wow. feature film. The audience, I slipped into one uh, theater and sat in the back to observe it all. The audience responded more powerfully to this essay than the feature film. So my point with that is you, you don't set this up. Mom. This is something that God sets up. And now mm-hmm. I see my voice and that talent able to communicate with people. And people are responding, that, you know, tears and emotion mm. just looking at this piece so there there you have <laughs> wow wow yeah that thing that he has given you turning it around and bringing it back to him and letting him use it yeah, yeah. That, that, that that's amazing so obviously you know you are an entrepreneur a multiple state one like that so there's definitely incomes right coming in um multiple streams of income yeah. but there is a difference between generating multiple streams of income and building multiple streams of income. Could you help elaborate on the, that differentiation? Yeah. So I think um, first of all, you know, and, and we're in a we're in an interesting time mm-hmm. where everybody's talking about money, revenue, six figures. This is yeah. like uh, um, some of the stuff on social media. I've actually coined a phrase, um, entrepreneurography, because, and, and, and it's, 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 it's basically putting forth things that are not realistic, that are never going to happen. Mm. If you're, if you, uh, you focus on what you love to do, what you do naturally, what mm. you do naturally that you have honed and you've developed, mm. it will bring the income. It, you know, it, it will, it, it will come from from places that you de- you didn't even uh, expect it to come from. Now, so there is that, and that is, I think, just the natural outcome of presenting your gifting, presenting your talent, your service, your product. Okay, but then there there is the other side, which is more strategic, more planned. Mm-hmm. Um, there is the what what I see as the immediacy of you know income to live, to enjoy mm-hmm. life. Um, to, to be a blessing to others. Um, and then there is the, the, the deeper and uh, more long-term planning. And that is for, for wealth that should go beyond y- you and your generation. So it should be strategic so that hopefully you can push it down the line. So it's, long, it's more long-term. So one is short-term for the immediacy of life, the other is long-term. Mm-hmm. And so when you talk about things like photography, uh, I've authored eight books working on number nine. Mm-hmm. So this is this is uh, the kind of uh, product, if you will, that can extend far beyond my life. My children mm-hmm. and children's children could benefit, particularly, I think, for the, the photography. You know, th- that's something that, uh, you know, much of it is ageless. Mm-hmm. 
the fact that you're capturing history means that the longer it is it is it's out in the in the um in the market the more value and, and appreciation that grows in it uh, and in, with these images from stillness, for example, here in Chicago, my intent was to capture this historic mo um, moment. You don't see empty streets in Chicago. Mm -hmm. You see traffic is everywhere, you know, mm -hmm. buses and cars and trucks mm -hmm. and people. And, and so I said, let me capture that so that people will have that 20 years, 30 years, 50 years down the road to look at. So mm -hmm. that's a part of the long-term strategy in terms of, uh, in terms of wealth. World, wow, yeah. that's a, that, that that's that's it, it, one thing I picked out of there is having legacy minded, right? Being legacy minded is one way that differentiates between the boats. You know, there is the immediacy, like, oh, I gotta pay the bills. You know, okay, I gotta make sure we can take a vac vacation, and then there is the down the road, way down, like you don't even know, but just make sure this is there for them. You know, yeah, give them a. A, a, a startup, a, a, a head start, you know, give the, right. the, the, the future generation a head start to continue. Yeah. 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 So, you, author, photographer, man of God, we, we, and man of God is just by itself maybe 20 parts like, okay, there's counseling, there is um, ministering, there is all of this stuff. How are you able to effectively balance multiple competing priorities? while ensuring that these roles, you know, that you have, and also the most important one, husband and father, right? Mm -hmm. And all of this, you are able to navigate these roles and none of them is neglected. Yeah, so there, number one, it, it takes some very serious intentionality. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the first step is to establish the priorities. Okay, what is primary? So we know, for me, the ministry of the gospel is primary. Everything mm -hmm. else comes after that. Mm -hmm. um, but I also want to point out, again, the fact that congruency, mm -hmm. okay, uh, is a factor. Mm -hmm. how, how do these relate to one another? They, they, they're not totally autonomous, you know. Uh, I, when I'm traveling to Nigeria, for example, mm -hmm. your home mm -hmm. country, to, mm -hmm. to minister. Mm -hmm. My camera bag, the, all the equipment is on my back. Mm -hmm. Even as I enter the sanctuary, or of course there's mm -hmm. somebody going yeah. to grab it and assist you, right? Yeah, yeah. But it sits right next to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I have photographs that I've taken from the pulpit. Uh, mm -hmm. One time I was in uh, Akwanga mm -hmm. and we were teaching and there were, it, there were leaders there, you know, hundreds and hundreds of leaders. So from the pulpit, I capture some stunning, powerful images mm. of people worshiping. Mm. Well, that you, you can see the connection there. Yes. There's yes. no separation. Bond. There's there's worship. Yes. There's a response to the worship. Yes. I captured the moment. Now others can worship as a consequence of just viewing that image. Whether they heard the message or was present in the meeting, the message speaks. Mm. You see? And so... Uh, I write books. Well, I'm I'm writing one soon. Uh, mm -hmm. The high caliber human being. I'm simply mm -hmm. describing God's intent for mankind. Come on. It, you know, so you you were you were constructed in a certain way. That was the design. So the design got disrupted by sin. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the fix? Jesus, is the fix. What's the what's the big picture? Uh, it's the redemption of mankind and the restoration of all things. How do I play a role in that? So I'm communicating that through this book. So how does that work? That works through the preaching, but it also works through the photography because through the photography, I'm communicating messages that says to man, this is who you are. Here's the beauty of your having been created by this wonderful God. You are created in his own image and here's a reflection of it, right? So the congruency is there. So it's there's never warring involved. Mm. But in fact, it's kissing one another. It's complimenting one another. It's augmenting, you know, so I can move from one space to the other. And I'm still speaking the same message. And that is you were created to make something or someone better mm. from the menu. 
which part you want to participate in. And so when it comes to family, as I said, uh, being very intentional, yes. you know, I did things like constructing my schedule. And even now I'm loving the tools. I'm, I'm now using this Calendly to schedule everything through. So I can, I can apportion out different days, different day parts for different activities to make sure that I'm leaving space for rest. I'm leaving mm. space for family time. I'm leaving space for leisure. All of that is factored into that one tool Come that on. I use. Now, prior to that, I would lean on my assistant, my team. Mm -hmm. I would express to them what I needed. So, for example, Mondays was always my day. Mm -hmm. And I encouraged strongly, sometimes even over the pulpit. If you want to talk to me, please don't make it Monday unless mm. it's a, a crisis that I need to respond to. Because even as a leader, I've, I've determined that I don't need to respond to every crisis. And what's a crisis to you may not really be a legitimate crisis. So let's balance that way that. So I use my assistant. I use my pastoral staff. I use my my wife. And I say, OK, can you protect me for this space? Mm. Yes. If I need to go away, can you protect me? Can you, I'm going to shut my phone off. I'm going to not answer. You. Can you protect me? Mm. Yeah. And then I, I worked to be home at least three or four times a week in the evenings to have dinner with my family. And since I love to cook and I do it very well, oh, wow. I try to, I try to prepare a meal for them and serve them at the table. That keeps that balance too. Mm. You know, now it's, you know, I'm a family man. I'm a father. You yes, know, yes, you yes, know, yes. I, I'm a grandfather now. Thank God. Uh, and so but now I say it as though it's simple. Mm -hmm. It's not simple. It's just being deliberate about it and continuing yeah. to work to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. The minute you said it, I had to write it down. I've heard it before. Of course, it's not this big thing, intentionality, like, yeah, yeah intentionality of this is what I need to do at this time. And, and I think with that, it's where you sit back and you look at all these roles and then how I make sure that they flow. And that intentionality leads to the congruence you have, right? That it yeah. easy, it just goes yeah, from yeah. one into the other, you know? And then there is the part of the team around you, the spouse, that is a major one, you yes. know, having a spouse that ties into your vision, ties into your calling, you know, when the Bible says the spouse is a helpmate, man, like, yeah, as I start Absolutely. getting deeper into ministry work and all everything that he's called me to, I was like, oh, wow, yes, you were really sent for me, like, just understanding the fact that, okay, daddy needs to be by himself now, come, let's yes. go do something else, yeah, yeah, okay. just, yeah, like that alone is there without me even saying it, just sensing like, okay, this is the time he needs for himself. Come, let's go play. He'll play with exactly. you later. Or something. It's yeah. something. Yeah. 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 Another thing you touched on was Monday, keeping Monday holy, yeah. so to speak. When I started setting my calendar too, I allow for meetings on Tuesdays and Thursdays only. Monday is beginning of the week. Please, I need to figure out what's my week going to look like? Where am I focusing? Wednesday, it's okay. Maybe I've had a meeting. What's that follow-up? Thursday, I do a couple of ministry work. Okay, let's get back to it. And Friday is a wrap-up. So that's that thing. Tuesday, Thursdays, I try to keep it open like, hey, but yeah. when Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I block it off my calendar. It has to be. It has to be. Very important. Then I'll be like, okay, you know what? All right, let me allow it. Yeah, but yeah, that is that is so and, key. And, and you know, for leaders, particularly some leaders and even entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. um, they're very challenged in this area and they lack the discipline and the self-control and the, there's a resistance to factor this into their lives because, you mm. know, if, when you're passionate about something, you can just go, 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 go. Yeah. And you, you don't, it doesn't feel like work to you. Yes. It, it feels like life to you. Yes. Uh, but you have to recognize uh, your limitations mm. and you have to factor in the, factor in the possibilities that, while the, the heart and the mind uh, seems to ha be able to go without uh, uh, slowing, yes. uh, the body will talk to you <laughs> and eventually the mind will talk to you as well. Yes. Yes. Uh, and and by, in my book, Leadership Essentials, chapter one mm. is called Practicing Rest. Practicing mm. rest. So I, I lay out the different ways to do that, the different ways to structure that. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, pointing out the distinction between a vacation and a church conference. 
or or a business trip. They're not, mm -hmm. no, you, you, you separate those out. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I've used that to teach leaders um, around the world about yeah. how to rest, yeah. how to schedule vacations. I said, you know, you, you hear the term, take vacation. Yeah, yeah, you have to take it. It's not coming to you. There you go. Yeah. 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 You have to. It's important. Yeah. I, again, if we go back to Genesis on the seventh day, God rested. You know, yeah, it's important. If it wasn't important, the Holy Spirit would have allowed that to be put into the Bible. That's so, right. yeah. yeah, you are in all of these roles. You are able to navigate it with intentionality, and then there's a congruence to it. But it's also been said, right, that success mostly happens when we focus on just one thing at one time and doing it well. Um, do you agree or disagree with that statement? and expand on your answer, sorry. Sure, no worries. I, I think it depends on the individual. Um, I think, so, so if I wasn't made the way I made, oh. and I have to accept that, that I made this way, oh. right? Then I would rather choose one thing and focus and go hard on that one thing, I would. And, um, but I'm not made that way. And, and so, I, I go with with who I am. There's so many formulas and uh, directives given by society and mm -hmm. whatever groups, and and everything that I've gone into, you know, even with the arts, there's there's always this design, this 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 scripted way of doing that everyone presses everyone to subscribe to. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, that's 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 not the way. Like it, it's unnatural. <laughs> It's wow. unnatural. You, you know, a river flows, it, it wraps and twists and it does all kinds of things with this direction. And, uh, and if, if, you wanna, if you want to have an experience that uh, supports what I'm saying, try to change the direction of the flow of a river. You know, so you, you, you know, I say, I, I say go with the internal flow. Um, and, uh, and, and no one can dictate what that looks like. No one can, you know, it, well, put it this way. You could, you could, you could fall into the box and mm -hmm. accept that yeah. and go in, but mm -hmm. you're going to have some frustration and some regret because mm -hmm. you're going to think to yourself, you know, why didn't I try that? Or why didn't I try this? And, and by the way, if you're talking about wealth and riches, mm -hmm. you, most people who are very, very wealthy, Mm. They arrived at that place not knowing how they got there. If you meet millionaires and you've talked to them about their story, very few will say, well, I sat down and I put A, B, C, D, E, F, G on a piece of paper and I followed that order and boom, I became a millionaire. Most of them can't repeat it. Come on, come on. If you paid them, yeah. you know, so... Yeah. So who who has the who has the 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 right uh, prescription? Mm. Nobody. Mm. So you do what you do, mm. and then things are manifest in that. And that that I call for us believers, I call the serendipity of the Holy Ghost. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Thank you, Bishop. That's what separates us, right? That's that mark from how because again we are missionaries in the marketplace. So we don't just go, we don't just operate on, oh, seven steps to follow a leader, eight steps to be a millionaire. Those articles, I, I see them anytime I open up the Apple News and it's like on, on different magazines and I don't want to name anyone, but I, I, I totally ignore like, there is no late step. You just said something so important when you sit down with really successful people. And I'll, I'll add something to that, not just success in like wealth, but in, in impact, in yes, right. being able to have done impactful things. They don't, they, they didn't set out like, you know what? I want to be impactful. I want to, it, it just comes as they follow that voice, as they follow purpose. And yeah, you are so right. You're so right. Yeah. yeah. There's a term I, I, I use called, uh, called intersecting, right? Mm. And and this is what you know. I'm I'm 40 some years as an entrepreneur. Never worked for anybody, really. You know. Wow. So what I've what I've encountered time and time again are, are these intersections. You know, someone invites you to a meeting for one purpose. Mm. You meet someone else that you just connect with. You begin to have a conversation, only to find out that you were coming to the same intersection at the same time. Come on. It's a four way stop, and you're looking at each other, saying, "Wow." 
And there's this connection that, that um, moves the river mm. in another direction, mm. in the direction that it was supposed to move in, right? Oh, so you know, again, a man of faith, a person yes. of faith. Yes. You know, I'm, I, I live daily with this anticipation of the, of the river being redirected. Mm. And that the movement and the intersecting is there. So um, uh, in, in my book, You Can Do It, I talk about opportunity and mm. the fact that opportunity just shows up. You never know when. So you have yes. to, you should anticipate it. You should expect it. You never know when and never treat any situation as a small situation. Uh, Reuben Hurricane Carter in, his, in, in the movie uh, Hurricane, uh, he says, Small doors mm -hmm. open to big rooms. <laughs> oh, Michelle, come on. <laughs> that, that is so true. You, when you stay in that space of anticipation, when you stay expecting the Holy Spirit to disrupt you, to lead you, then you are sensitive. But when you, when you and, and I think I should have said this in the beginning, those that missed our um, Lakewood Business uh, Ministry event earlier in the year, in February, yes, I think. The Lonely Entrepreneur. Uh, yes, The Lonely Entrepreneur. Please go back and watch it. Bishop was, that was where we were like, you know what, we got to bring Bishop back. But I digress towards that because I believe during that recording, you talked about the flexibility. Mm. That's it right there. We're not being rigid and like okay. it must be this, but be flexible. Allow yourself to be to, to, to move according to his flow. The river. Yeah. Let the river flow. Uh, the, you know, the, the, life is just filled with so many rich possibilities. Um, you know, we, we preach a certain way, and sometimes even in our preaching, uh, there is the overuse of terms and the unwillingness to borrow other terms and phrases to describe the experience of walking with God. Mm. But, but the, 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 God just does his thing, if I can say it that way. Yes. And, and he'll do it with whoever is willing, okay? But, mm. but, you, but there can't be rigidity. You, you can't establish formulas that box God in. Because mm. God does whatever he wants to do. He, he, he functions outside of time. Mm. Uh, you know, it, there's no obstructions materially. Wow. Uh, and so, so there are always possibilities before us. Yes. The, the key is to be willing, as you stated so well, to be flexible, to be agile, to be, to be fluid. Yes. And, uh, and then, and then all, all kinds of wonderful things can happen. This, this pandemic has produced, even now we're here, I'm in Chicago, mm -hmm. and you're there, I believe in Texas. And, yes. uh, yeah. and so when, when would, how would this have happened, you know, two years ago? Would it be this way? Probably not. We're using this technology and we've grown comfortable with the technology yes. and we're, and, but so here we go. There's some who are arguing, oh, my God, this technology, I don't know, be glad when we get to this or get to that or go back to this or go back to that. I'm like, yeah. no, let's let's go forward. Come on. Let's go forward with what God just deposited Come on. that he created and perfected before we got to this place. So when we got to this place, all we had to do is pick up this tool, Ooh. being fluid, being agile, being flexible. And so now it's a matter of, OK, OK, God, what more? can we do with what you've put in our hands? And so I wrote a book uh, during the pandemic uh, called The Digital Pulpit. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and in fact, Liberty University just picked this book up as a textbook for one of their courses and the Logos platform just put it on their platform just within the last uh, wow. months they reached out to me. And, but uh -huh. it's because the conversation about this Yes. And the and the forward thinking about mm. this that has occurred. Yeah. Uh, some are being rigid. Some yes. are being stayed and 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 refuse to accept it as a part of our future. That's yes. not to be set aside when things go back, but in fact to be incorporated to make us far more effective globally than we were two years ago. Bishop, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> See. If one thing, well, several things, but I want, I want to start with the, f the first thing. You just said it, me and you connecting, Chicago, Houston. It would have been, oh, when, when, when's your schedule? Let's talk to your assistant. When can we get you to fly out here, make a hotel reservation, get the room, do the marketing? 
hey, let's just jump on Zoom. Let's record this podcast. Let's and just and, and, and send it out. And that's it. You see that? <laughs> <laughs> and again, I think also another thing that we stumble on uh, uh, missionaries in the marketplace, you know, uh, Christian entrepreneurs, is expecting God to come this way. Like the last time, this is how he spoke to me. The last time, this is how he showed up. So we we just like, it has to be like this. And then we get into the religiosity of it, you know, mm. instead of just being open and yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and let me just say this because Please. I know some people will go here. So what we're not saying is that you just kind of go with the flow without structure, intent, planning, strategy. No, sir. No, sir. Your your job mm -hmm. is to do all that you know to do from a business standpoint, from a discipline standpoint, from a strategy standpoint, from a managing money, managing resources. You do all of that. Now, the the proper position is to note mm -hmm. that God at any any time, as he desires, sees fit for his purposes, e eternal purposes may disrupt, interrupt, or insert himself in that process. Mm -hmm. So the flexibility uh, and the fluidity mm -hmm. is, is expected, anticipated, and then don't resist when he decides, I'm going to disrupt this. He just disrupted church as usual. We, we're, not, we're not receiving that as the reality. So the disruption came. Now, here's the funny thing. I was preaching in Cameroon way before this pandemic happened, mm -hmm. actually maybe a year or so, within a year mm -hmm. or so. There I spoke prophetically, did not know it was as prophetic. Mm. I spoke to the young people mm -hmm. and, I, and I named them disruptors. I mm -hmm. said, you're disruptors mm -hmm. because you've decided that there's some things about what we've done and the way we've done it that you're unwilling, unwilling to accept. You're intolerant of it, right? Yeah. I see that as a voice of God. I saw it then, I see it now. Yes. I said, God is trying to tell us something, old people. OK, so here we are again in this in this space where the Lord is saying, hey, God, shift. Oh, I'm doing something different. Yes. I have not changed yes, the, the, yes. the, the basis of 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 why I called you, how I call you, where I've positioned you has not changed. But here's another way. Here's an expanded way. You know, roll with God. That's what I say. Roll with him. Come on. Come on. Come on. Roll with the so so you are truly multifaceted because in speaking with you. The, the bishop has come out, the entrepreneur has come out just now in that last question, the bishop came out a little bit and I, I love it, God is so yeah. good. I love it, I love it so much. So we're conversating with Bishop Nolan, uh, the profile of a multifaceted Christian entrepreneur. You've done quite a couple of things, not a lot, just maybe written eight books, photography, business, you know, you don't do a lot with the time at all, but <laughs> it's been, it's been funny. But, you know, it, we know that entrepreneurs experience burnout, failed attempt at something and like, oh man, I messed that opportunity up or, or how do I get back up? And, you know, this may be because of poor time management, bad decisions, financial decisions, or partnering with the wrong person. Mm. As much as you can, could you share a few spiritual and practical tips on how to quickly recover from these setbacks and these issues and if any of our listeners find themselves in situ similar situations? Yeah. So uh, there are a few things that I think you have to practice uh, no matter, you know, what you do, where you do it, how you do it, whether mm -hmm. you're Christian or not Christian, yes. you know, there needs to be some exercise involved. You need to watch what you're eating, uh, work on sleep. That's a tough one for me. I, yeah. you know, I just have to work on that sleep thing. You know, sometimes you've got stresses that wake you in the morning and, and uh, anxieties can jump you. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have to have uh, healthy relationships, people who can, can tell you the truth, people who could ring the bell for you i found that with stress stress is, is not always easily measured by the individual experiencing it uh and uh i i, I apply prayer uh, particularly when it comes to anxiety one of the common prayers for me is lord settle my spirit settle my spirit you know mm -hmm. let me get into the, a calm listening place 
to where I can hear his voice and that I could uh, properly assess mm -hmm. what's happening in my world that may be producing stress mm -hmm. or producing anxiety. And uh, and particularly in this time that we're in, I mean, yeah. you got anxiety, low level depression, everybody's yeah. getting hit by it, whether they want to admit it or not. So, um, so yeah, exercise, prayer, you know, the, the word, of course, uh, diet, uh, rest, and, and then just that, that those breaks, the, the, and I, and I think by the way, they should be scheduled, you know, your daily break, you know, I like quarterly breaks a week or two off, uh, and then the, those times with family. So mm -hmm. all of those pieces will help with the burnout. Now, so I, I think everybody at some point in time experiences mm -hmm. some level of burnout, um, uh, you, you just have to, you just have to do the work and having a therapist isn't a bad deal either. If it's needed in your life, you know, because if you have other stresses going on, whether it's uh, relationship issues, uh, health issues, I've, I've dealt with, Oh my God, some health issues during the pandemic, I was actually diagnosed with lymphoma. Mm -hmm. So I had to be treated for that. I think maybe when I was on with you guys, I might've either been in treatment or coming out of treatment. I, I, I was able to, by the grace of God, work through the whole experience and, uh, and, and still, you know, remain productive, but uh, yeah, you have to do the work and uh, try to try to know yourself, try mm -hmm. to know the triggers, try to know the indicators, uh, you know, be mindful of those and then be responsive to them. Don't don't ignore things. Um, when it comes to healthcare, and let me just pop this in there. Um, so um, I have my annuals that I don't miss. I have a doctor that I'm comfortable with who knows me. Mm -hmm. I know my own body better than he does. Mm -hmm. I self-advocate, ask the right questions, interject the right thoughts, say what I need to say, you know, and I, I always take a list to the doctor. I'm asking all the questions, even if they sound dumb, right? Mm -hmm. Those are the things led to the, that led to diagnosis for me mm -hmm. that saved my life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being mindful of your health care and, yeah. and all of this. physically, all of that yeah. is important and being on top of it. So yeah. you know, that's, a, but, you know, again, that's a part of the package. Yes, Some people yes. want to just do all of the stuff that make them feel good and the success mm -hmm. drive, mm -hmm. and they want to ignore those things, but mm -hmm. it has to be put into one package, a whole life. That's yes. part of it. Yes. Yes. You got to do the whole work. You got to look at it holistically, man. Yes, so sir. many nuggets in there. First of all, looking at yourself, telling yourself the truth of where, you know, um, I learned this a funny way, but, you know, before I got married dating and it won't work out and it, it would always be like, yeah, she was this, she was that. And the Holy Spirit started dealing with me like, you are just this perfect person, like nothing is wrong with you, right? You know, so now if, before I got married with my wife, I started going through that introspect, like, okay, what was my piece in this? Mm -hmm. Where did I come up short? Good. So that I check this before the next thing happens. Instead of me just lying to myself, like, oh no, I'm perfect. You know, they did this, they did that, they didn't do this. No, where did I fail in this? Where were the missing places? And then if we bring that into something like this, you know, navigating um, the marketplace, okay, I messed that up. Was it bad timing, uh, bad uh, time management? Did I did I get this red flag about a partner, but I still ignored it? You know, like really doing that and being aware of it, taking those notes and then like, okay, now I know how to check this and then moving forward. And I, I like to, I love the part where you, you know, we are missionaries in the marketplace. Um, we're not just business people, but at the same time too, we are, on it, we're operating in the marketplace. So, yeah, so we, we we can't just be all religious about it. You know, oh, there has to be practical things that we have to do. No, it's not just gonna be just pray, just pray. Prayer is great. I'm not saying anybody should. It's you wake up, you do it, you go to bed, you do it, you're driving, you do it, you're sitting before a meeting, it's constant. But also don't neglect that physical part that has to take place about it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I one of the things that I also state about my health, about my health. None of the things that I've been diagnosed with were for cause, meaning mm. it wasn't my neglect. Mm. When I ask a doctor, well, where does this come from? The lymphoma, you know, one of the things that I've dealt with, it, he said, I don't, we don't know. 
God, I don't know either, you know, mm. but I, I'm determined, however, not to have health issues for cause because I neglected to do something or I was, you know, eating wrong or yes. not resting, et cetera. I try to comply as much as mm. possible. Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, what is just necessary to take care of a body that you have temporarily that mm -hmm. uh, is either going to last long and serve you well or not long or not serve you well. So, you know, we have to be mind mindful of that. Mm -hmm. that, that is so true. Like, <laughs> like driving your car and it's showing you it's E and you just keep driving it or the check engine light is on. You're like, yeah, it, it comes on and off. You'll take care of yourself. Really? Okay. <laughs> and then <laughs> the day you really need it, it's like, well, I gave you a sign. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thank exactly. you. Thank you. You do a little bit of coaching as well, obviously, right? And what advice would you give to Christian entrepreneurs um, that seek, you, like, okay, now let's say this is just a quick coaching or a session with you, right? What advice would you give or guidance on how to build a profitable, faith-centered business? Okay, so let me, I wanna, I'm gonna go back with some of this question. Sure. So when we talk about faith centered, so mm -hmm. the the idea of sacred and secular has mm -hmm. never set well with me. Okay. I think, I think we live one life. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's uh, uh, the convergence of the two is more natural than unnatural. Mm. So, so for example, you know, am I growing up and possibly in yours too, uh, yeah. where you're from, you know, secular music was separated and it was yeah. put here yeah. and then Christian music was put there. Mm -hmm. But, but honestly, there are some quote unquote Christian songs that don't mm -hmm. really belong in that category, just based on either erroneous doctrine is shared yeah. or some messaging that that feeds the flesh more than it does the spirit. And then conversely, mm -hmm. on the secular side, there are songs, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, you know, when you feel mm -hmm. down and out, sing a song, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? So th these songs are, are kingdom messages. Yeah. The kingdom is not restricted to Christianity. Mm. It's not restricted to the church mm. because uh, by its very nature, uh, the kingdom is all is all consuming. Mm. The, the The objective of heaven now, the strategy that's in force, is 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 that that the kingdoms of this world will be consumed by mm. the kingdom of God. And so, mm. you know, if if we try to determine where God is, we're going to mm -hmm. because He's all kinds of places, places mm. that we, we can't even fathom. He's there. You run mm. into him and you say, wow, this guy is doing a great thing. It's because yeah. he's, been, he's been infected mm. by the kingdom of God. So we become infectious. So as we are out in the marketplace and we're doing mm. what we do, mm -hmm. I, I don't even think there has to be a mindfulness mm. of being a Christian in that space or mm. a Christian-based business there are principles and values that we've adopted that we have have embodied that become such a natural part of us that we don't even know the majority of the time that we're expressing or enunciating these things they just hmm. show up they hmm. show up in our practices in our in our ethics they show up in our excellence they just they manifest in these ways mm -hmm. so so uh, forgive me for for the departure, but no, please. I wanted to I wanted to hit that corner as we talk about, you know, establishing uh, a successful business and then and then coaching. So my my style of uh, providing counsel, I don't even know if if I would be considered a coach. I I've never advertised. You know, it's just a recent conversation. In fact, I just did some photographs for a Nigerian uh, sister. She's a she's a doctor. Mm. She came to me about um, you know ten years or so. Mm -hmm. She was she was tired of uh, practicing medicine in an office in a hospital setting, and so she had some ideas about wanting to write some books. She wanted mm -hmm. to do something all over the place. Now it wasn't, you know, the fact that she had these desires was cool. Mm -hmm. But what I brought her back to was the core. I said, mm. wait now, you have all of this Harvard level education. You have these years of experience as a physician. Mm -hmm. I said, what you have to find out and discover is 
what are the tentacles that can come from that place that just mm. that just feeds from and complements mm -hmm. as opposed mm -hmm. to retooling and coming way over here and and trying something no utilize that so short story long she is now a coach to physicians to help physicians balance their lives mm. very powerful yeah. so so while we were shooting this weekend she said you know I, I just want to tell you you know who you are in that space in that counseling space mm -hmm. because it's it's, so, it's sort of like finding the, the all things Nolan branding. Mm -hmm. Finding my voice in that is, mm -hmm. is a bit challenging. So I'll just say it this way. I'm more of an inspirationalist and, and a creative strategist for people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and these are her words. What I'm able to do is listen to your path mm -hmm. and help to make sense of it for you to bring the structure, to show you where you are and to help you to identify where you're going. And uh, when, I, when I do that with anybody and I do it with people more in, in, in casual, less informal settings, people get it. It's like, mm -hmm. oh my God, you know, you hit it. You hit the mm -hmm. nail on the head and they're able to grab that information and go. And so for me, it doesn't take this long-term process of coaching. I'm not trying to get people to commit to me for, you know, three months mm -hmm. or, or, uh, a year. And in fact, as I shared with her, I'm more comfortable. If, if Remy called me and said, hey, no, you know, I want a session with you. I want to spend yeah. some time. I'd say, okay, let's start with an hour. Let's talk. Yeah. Okay. If if you find value in that, and if we're hitting the nail on the head, let's continue. If not, no problem. You know, yeah. bless you. Whatever you receive from it, I, mm -hmm. I function that way. But just as you're talking to me now, mm -hmm. this is very natural for me. Yeah. You know, this yeah. doesn't. This takes no effort, and I have all of these years and all of these stories and experiences. And my God, I could go on and on and on and on and on. And I just draw from that. It's a mm -hmm. reservoir. Mm -hmm. And uh, and it's and it's very practical, um, and so it's 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 uh, one of those things that just seeps out of me. Yeah, the the experiences we go through, it's it's um, it's for others. You know, I tell people all the time, like when we read the Bible about David, oh, David did this, oh, he did that, <laughs> and oh, uh, Peter did this, but but that's what we should be doing right now you know the 67 the 68 book of the bible like mm -hmm. okay this is what remy went through this is what bishop nolan went through and you can read that and take lessons from it take inspiration from it and keep on moving. Yeah, yeah yeah um i want to come back to that for a minute and i think there's a little bit more i can extract from you there if you don't okay. mind um if i'm hearing you correctly as an entrepreneur Go into the marketplace and be the best you can be. That's right. Strive for excellence. Don't limit yourself to, oh, I'm a Christian yeah, that's a based business. I'm a faith centered business. Like just by being who you're called to be, by allowing those Christian principles which are in you, just yes. exhume out of you, yes. you are already being a Christian based centered yes. business. Yes. And then, and so, so in that even, yeah. Yeah. There is a, a, a very specific spiritual dynamic that we don't harness or control. Mm. So, yeah. So the Holy Spirit is doing things real time that's beyond our knowledge. We always want to know everything and, and have control over it. And that's why we we craft these these theories and formulas and processes, because we, we want to feel like we can push the button and, and uh, click the lever and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is going to move this way or that way. He's no, he's not a dog. Come on. He's, not, he's not our puppy. So, so, so the thing is to be, you, you, you're present. The Bible says, and I'm using different language. We are containers of the divine. There's a fragrance within that pours out of us. We, you know, it's like if you wear cologne, mm -hmm. you know, by midday, mm -hmm. you don't smell it anymore. Yes. But anybody that encounters you, they smell it, right? The Holy Spirit, because you're familiar, you woke up this morning, you talk to him, you thank them, you got your new mercies, you put in your pocket and you go about your day. By midday, you're no longer conscious of it, but he's still very, very pronounced. 
very, very fragrant. And mm -hmm. people who are encountering you are being impacted. You don't even know. And guess what? You don't need to know. It's really none of your business. Live your life. Come on. Live your Come life. On. If you're an accountant, go do accounting work. Do books. Yeah. Help yeah. people count their money. Help people yes. organize their finances. Yes. Do yes. it. Just do that. Just mind yes. your business. Let the Holy yes. Spirit do it. He's hitting people. Yesterday, I had uh, a, a young rapper that rented my gallery mm -hmm. to film his music video. So they came in. They had the the alcohol bottle. They were they were uh, empty bottles. It was just a part of the set and mm -hmm. everything. And I'm not freaky about alcohol, but but he he came in the door and he immediately started to apologize to me. And I'm thinking, why is he apologizing to me about these bottles, you know? But he was experiencing whatever he was experiencing. I had nothing to do with it. I wasn't going to get involved with it. I said, sir, you're renting my space. I have nothing to do with what you're bringing here, what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I only asked, you know, just from the smell standpoint, I don't want you smoking particularly marijuana. But uh, yes. other than that, treat it like it's your home. Clean it up when you're done. And thank you so much for your business. I had one young man that came as a part of the crew. He liked a jacket that I had on and he commented mm -hmm. about the jacket. Mm -hmm. I was able to engage him. Now I'm mindful at this mm -hmm. point because mm -hmm. I know here's a young man and an older man and mm -hmm. I can say uh, one word to him mm -hmm. that could change the trajectory of his life. And I know that for a certain, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. now this is based on my, uh, you know, my years, my age and stage of life, some of the things that I want to. You know? So, so there are times when I, I turn it on. In this case, I was very deliberate to engage him, to look him in the eye and to treat him like a man. I can make that deposit. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. And I got backing. I got the backing of the Holy Spirit. I have the backing of truth mm -hmm. that I'm drawn from in that moment. He doesn't know what hit him. I never said I was a minister. I never said I was a Christian. I never brought the subject up. It's not necessary. Now, he let him Google and let Google tell him, right? Mr. Google can tell him, then he can connect the dots. And then what happens? There's a value and an appreciation mm -hmm. for the God that he encountered. Yes. And he didn't even know it. That's the power of this thing, Remy. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Bishop, you're blessing my life. I'm telling you, man, I can't sit you. I just, I'm not trying to control myself, but it's you just allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through you rather than just holding up this signboard. Like, look at me, I'm a Christian. Look at me, I'm a Christian. And even in that space, you end up doing more damage to the body of Christ then when you just be, it's not even being a faith-centered or Christ-centered business. It's you being Christ-centered. When you are Christ-centered, everything that comes out of you will be Christ-centered. Everything that you touch, without you putting that as the label, it will just I mean, flow. Your yes. It's coming out of your pores. Yes. Like, like, like <laughs> the fragrance. Like the fragrance, seriously. Fragrance. Yeah. Fragrance. You know, okay, so... The kingdom of God, mm. I'll be a preacher for a moment, is manifest, yes. yeah, yes. is manifested through influence, mm -hmm. infiltration, mm -hmm. demonstration. Mm -hmm. So let's just deal, deal with infiltration for a moment. Mm -hmm. When you are just, when you, when you just be mm -hmm. uh, you know, a human being, when you just be, with what's been put into you, it, it opens the door of opportunities for you to be places that those wearing the signboard will never ever be invited. They'll never be invited in those doors and spaces. And most people uh, who are Christians with that kind of, uh, you know, with the, with the with signboard mentality, yeah. 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 even that language, is so subculture that they can't even relate to people outside of that subculture. And we don't realize we've done this thing. You know, uh, my challenge, and we, we're actually changing the name of our church and going in another direction, right? Because mm -hmm. what I've discovered looking at, as I've interacted with leaders and churches around the world mm -hmm. is that we do so very well to talk one another, but we're, we're terrible at talking to anybody outside of that space. And we, we are aliens to the world. We're foreign to them. Mm -hmm. When Jesus came on the set, 
those outside of that world yeah. were fascinated by him. Yeah. They were drawn to him because say, now who is this guy that's, yeah. that's yeah. just walking around loving people and yeah. touching people? Who, what the heck? You know, and if you look at his messages, he spoke these parables. He didn't do a lot of preaching, as we call it. Very little. Very little. Only when it was necessary to talk to the disciples. But in terms of just general, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, discourse yeah, in public spaces, yeah. he just tell, told them about life. Yeah. Yeah. And they were yeah. they were eventually touched and transformed. They would ask the question, Nicodemus, yes, you know, yes. what do I what do I need to do to get some of this? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, be sure. Be sure, be sure, be sure. The um pastor in charge of uh, the business ministry, Pastor Brandon, of very close yeah. friend, one of my closest friends, he told me something a while back which blew me. He's like, I don't speak Christianese. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Oh, I love him. I love him already. I love him more. I follow him. On now you, yeah, yeah, now you love him even more. And, yeah, yeah. So now I love him even more. I don't speak. I don't speak. Not even in the pulpit, I don't speak. If you if you visit with me, so here's a, here's a, a constant when yeah. I do my my day starts uh, in the mornings. I said, listen, I want to invite you know anyone to pray, <laughs> but I want you to have the discipline to not use one church word. Ooh. I don't need Father God, God, Father God. I don't need the three amens. I don't need any of that. I need you to have an intelligent conversation with an intelligent God who's creative and knowledgeable. And by the way, he speaks all languages, including hip hop. So if hip hop is the way you want to communicate with him, go for it. But just be authentic and bring it, bring it from a place where you are saying something, you are articulating and communicating something that comes from your heart and not from a crafted speech that you think is going to impress God and more importantly, those listening. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> and, and this is what Christ said when we pray. Don't come with these recited words. He already knows what we need. It's like my daughter. She's about to be five. Uh, mm. Coming in. Most holy dad. Most everlasting dad of the <laughs> greatest dad. I, like, really? She literally just comes in, walks up to my table and That's just right. reaches and grab what is. I'm yes. like, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Pastor Joe shared this message about how one time when his daughter was young and he was in his study and she was like, hey, can I get, I think it was $20 or something. And he was like, she was like, yeah, go pick it up, you know. And she, was, she turned the other way. He was like, wait, this, this is the way. She's like, I already got it because I know you're going to say yes. Like you see that relationship of not, not the, can I talk to you? Like that's, it, it, that's in, in the way we approach God even, you know, like I know we're getting into ministry. It's, uh, it's the business the ministry. Yeah, but that's, 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 that's appropriate, you know. It's also in the way we handle these things too, you know, where we don't over Christianize our, our hustle you know it may be a better word to use but no that's yeah, good yeah well we don't over like okay Man. the grind is the grind come on you just happen to be a christian that's grinding yes. there's the distinction not a christian grinder a christian that is grinding you know so you in the grind and because you have you have the advantage because of the values and the principles of the kingdom you just come in the game with the advantage you lean into the advantage, you know, yes. sooner or later you, you, you wind up in spaces where someone asks. Now, when they ask, I unload. Right. Oh. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yes. I'm ready. Yes. <laughs> that is so true because I can go about and be like, you know, I'm a faith centered business and somebody could ask the simple question was, okay, what is the basis for your faith? Why do you look and I come up empty? So it's not just the <laughs> signboard. Yeah, I don't even have that relationship. I don't even have enough knowledge and wisdom of him, but I'm using him as, oh, well, you know, I'm a Christian business. I'm a Christian business. Okay, so share. Why are you a Christian? Why? why? Tell us about Jesus. And you're like, well, you know, you, you, you don't have a personal conversation that you can uh, convict in. Convict or a in. real conversation. Yes. 
Yes, or you go back time. to Bible, yeah, and, and just focus on, but not really sharing. Like this is you're telling somebody it's a personal relationship, but you can't share from a personal experience. But yes, yeah, yeah, it, it's <laughs> it, it's so it's so good. I, I'll, I'll say this piece, and we'll, we'll move on from here. But <laughs> to your point about how Christ was ministering, right? About stewardship, he used the parable of sowing, like, and if you go through. When you read the Bible, you know, you see the context of the times they are in and you see about, okay, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And because he was letting the people know he was speaking in their terms. He wasn't speaking Christianese. And recently the Holy Spirit deposited this in me. It's like the issue you have, Remy, is that you think Christ is a Christian. Mm. So, so, so it's that whole, okay, instead of following Christ, I'm following Christians. That yeah. is a wrong That's a place dangerous one. Yes. I, I, I make the statement all the time. Stop following Christ, Christians and follow Christ. Because it's, a, it's amazing just our, um, our, our behavioral patterns and how we follow. Yeah, just, much of it is uh, mindless. No one's thinking through the process. It's repeating that that appeals to them mm. uh, that, that they're drawn to yes uh, that that is and this is a big one that that is celebrated so because it's celebrated you want to be celebrated so you repeat the pattern and you're not thinking through and you're not even considering the whole of it what is the net mm. uh you know with, with our ministries i said there must be an objective and then if the objective is not being met we have to ask why isn't it being met is it mm. not being met because of our lack of effort is it not being met because the holy spirit isn't there is mm. it not being met because we lack the certain resources tools okay so we have to make that determination and and then we have to either perfect it in a way that we can or abandon it now that's the part the church freaks out about Yes. When you say we're just we're just gonna abandon that one. It's like, yeah. oh wait, can we do that? Yeah, we yeah. should. Mm -hmm. We don't do it enough. So now you have a lot of stuff that is still remaining, you know, under the guise of church that is really dead religion. It's gone. It's just it's it, it just needs a proper burial. And uh, mm -hmm. those are things that we have to we we have to work on. In the meanwhile, or in the meantime, the world is able to see it. And hmm. know that it is lifeless and dead. And so they, they resist it. Absolutely. So it becomes something that repels as opposed to draw. And it used to be because of our, our culture hmm. that people would adopt things that were dead because it was culturally appropriate to continue to dish the traditions of the fathers. And if not, we would be an offense, we would be offensive to the fathers. But then God raises up this generation of disruptors that says, nope, we're not going to do it. Wow. So now we have to get the answers. We have mm -hmm. to find the answers. And then we have to do something to move into those spaces. I'm not saying accommodate a rebellious people. Yes. I'm saying find out where the Holy Spirit is with what we're doing and follow the river. Yes. Yes. Follow the river. Whoa, Bishop, we, we can we can we can stay on that for another one hour, but we we're gonna we're gonna move on for the for the sake of we might have a we might have a follow up to this. I I feel it already. Let let's pull back now. Forty something years in that entrepreneurship, like you know, creating and doing all of this. If you could have a conversation with your younger self regarding starting a business that aligns with God's calling on your life, what are two or three essential nuggets you now know that you wished you would have known at that time? Okay, from a Christian perspective, mm -hmm. success <laughs> can only be defined one way, and that is obedient to God. And I say that because if you if you attempt to use you know world worldly measures to determine yes. success, you're going to miss more often than you're going to hit because mm -hmm. um, if you think about many of the prophets in scripture, yeah, who were sent to do a job to speak to a people, for example, to, to move them in a certain direction, the people mm -hmm. just rebelled and said, you know, get out. Yeah, we're not listening to you, go away. The fact that that prophet did what they were told to do mm -hmm. makes them successful. 
if the world measured that action and even the church today measured that action, they would call him mm -hmm. a dismal failure. Yes. So find out what it means to obey God for you in your life and do it. Number one, just do it. Yes. Number two, yes, sir. identify and pursue relationships with men and women who have discovered that and who and who walk it out and be responsive to their words a practice for me if i if i find a person that's legitimate that has the right stuff if they mm -hmm. gave me a list of 10 things to do i will pull out my phone and type the 10 things mm -hmm. and i will go one by one even when i don't understand it i am yeah. uncomfortable or maybe even disagree i do it do, 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 yeah. Do, do, do. yeah and i report back mm. i don't believe in this whole uh you know mentorship everybody now wants to grab mentors now and i want to frame this properly so people understand what i'm saying yes uh mentor today for a lot of guys, particularly in ministry, mm -hmm. is a guy that I call to, to either get a stroke from or glean some information that I need for the moment. I'm mm -hmm. not looking for long-term anything. I just need you to satisfy or, or help with a, a current situation to bring solutions, right? No, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the relationship should be uh, more comprehensive, more long-term, and there should be a willingness to walk with that person, allowing them to correct your gait from time to time to get you where you're going. Seek out that kind of relationship or those kinds of relationships, treasure them, celebrate them, give back to them. Mm. And uh, there you'll achieve uh, the ultimate of success and uh, your life will be fulfilled and, and very rich. Wow. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. Measure success by your complete obedience to God. Yeah. Do it. Just do it. Yeah. And secondly, identify and pursue relationship. Again, it's this thing that I see every time, right? It's like a cross. God and people. Yeah, yeah. Horizontal and vertical. Sorry, right. vertical and horizontal. Yeah, yeah. God and people. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Bring it together. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that that intersection as you talk. There about. it is. There's That's that it. word. That's it. That's <laughs> it. That's it, Bishop. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Our, our measurements are off sometimes. I, yeah. you know, I, listen. No, no one can get away from uh, admiring Pastor Joel. Yeah. So here, at my church. You could take my church and and put it on probably one third of your stage. Mm -hmm. All right. Who's the most successful? Depends on who's measuring and what measurement they're using. We both obey God. We both brought our talents and our gifts and, and laid them at the altar and say, okay, Lord, use these. Use this, yes. The obedience makes us both equally successful. Absolutely. Proper Absolutely. measurement. Proper Absolutely. measurement. That's it. That's it. Because, <laughs> because again, it's purpose. That's exactly why we were created here for, for his purpose, to further his kingdom agenda. It, it, we, you, we don't sit, and that's something I've learned, to, especially in the IT space that I'm in, you don't sit and go like, oh, how is this person doing this? You know, this is where God called me to. And another thing I avoid too is, oh, this is what's raining in IT. This is what everybody's doing. Why don't you do this? I'm not called to it. This yeah. is the garden I'm called to tender. I'll tender it and make sure that Wonderful. it is... Instead of running, oh, this is the new thing. Oh, this is the that thing. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm all over the place. But rather just stay focused. This is what I am called to do. That new one is making $2 million. That's fine. This is what I am called to do. And, and, and contentment. And we don't have time Ooh. to even do that. But, you know, if, if you're content, if you're in a place of contentment, that's a huge thing. We, we we don't value contentment no, no. as we did, but if, no. if you're content in that place, and so you you don't get caught up in the race, run mm. your own race. As mm. I said mm. it on social media re recently, work your own corner, <laughs> work your own corner. No, you didn't. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. Work your own corner, man, and and relax. Bishop. Like I want to, I'm, I'm going to go on your social media reel and see how the comments come. <laughs> what you oh. say? 
it, it can be explosive. Trust me. No, I know. I know. They ain't ready. They ain't ready at all, man. <laughs> it, well, it's yeah. Mm -mm. Let, let, let's move on. <laughs> yeah. So uh, as we round up uh, this phenomenal episode, talking with Bishop Nolan about the profile of a multi-faceted uh, Christian entrepreneur, or now maybe a multi-faceted entrepreneur, you know. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners before we conclude our time together today? Yeah, do what you love. Mm. Don't let anybody define mm. uh, your perspective. Mm. See what you see and, and pursue it and enjoy it. And above all, obey God. Mm. Mm. Bishop, yeah, um, yeah, I probably was getting too excited here, but I couldn't help it. This was this was so <laughs> good on so many levels, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, this was a blessing, this was a true blessing for sure. Um, how can our audience connect with you and stay in contact with you, uh, learn about more about your businesses, the new book you're coming out, The High Caliber uh, Human? How can how can that happen? Sure. So all things Nolan.com uh, is, is, the, is the central place where everything is found, all that I do, all of my social media links are there. So that's the simplest way. Just go all things Nolan.com. Okay. Facebook is my name, Nolan McCants. And awesome. uh, a lot of my activity goes on there. But yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, you are a bishop. You've blessed us today. But now towards that calling of being uh, anointed, an anointed man of God in on the pulpit. Just close out our time here with a word of prayer, if you don't mind. Surely. So Father, we just so appreciate these opportunities. Uh, I'm always amazed by how you bring people together that's a part of your family. Uh, brothers and sisters who encounter each other in varied uh, intersections and, and how incredible it is that we we know each other even in a moment because of that common denominator your holy spirit thank you for our um, ability to share these words today words matter they're very powerful and certainly there are, there are people who are who have been or will be impacted through this conversation for days and, and even years to come in so many different ways. And we just thank you for uh, giving us that gift, giving us these tools and granting us the, uh, the, the favor and the privilege to serve. Thank you for every gift and every talent that you've provided us with mm -hmm. and the opportunity to express those so thoroughly and so completely. Mm -hmm. Thank you for blessing our time together. Bless my yes. brother and, and the team that yes. works to bring forth this, uh, this podcast. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bishop Nolan, from my heart, on behalf of the Lakewood Business Ministry, the team behind this, like you said, the listeners that will get to listen to all of this. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you for having us.